Hello and welcome back to the series Teach Me Something. Now today I am joined by the beautiful Lewis Schenk. How are you, mate? Very good, mate. It's very kind. Good. Um, so Lewis, start from the start. In its simplest form, what do you do for a living? So yeah, I have an agency uh, and an e-commerce business. So that's, um, yeah, as simple as it really gets. Amazing. So tell us more about your agency. Um, what actually is it to its core? Yes. So we started out just public relations, essentially like niche down to primarily B2B founders, getting them booked on podcasts, securing media placements, and then turning all that into social media content. So I think you're, you know, founder who's the face of their business. We work to sort of help position and promote them in their, you know, respective field. Amazing. So when it comes to content, there's a lot of like conflating opinions out there. So when it comes to like repurposing content, what would you say the best way to go about creating virality is? Well, uh, I mean, virality comes down from like a few things. Like there, there's a few things that I look at and like, you know, in the business context, I'm not going to say I've gone viral, right? But okay. like I create a bit of golf content for fun. I've gone viral several times. And the thing that that boil has boiled down to is like one controversy, two yeah. relatability and shareability, right? So like, <laughs> if you think, I always think through what is something that I would send to my buddies, right? Those are the things that go viral, right? Like last night, for example, Orly, she shared me this thing from her favorite like ring brand. It's called Ring Concierge, right? And it was this video that was like, the hook was basically this chick like had her hand and she had like a cloth and she was wiping her hand with the cloth. Then she turns it over and says, uh, make this the last national boyfriend day and it had a ring on the, the wedding finger, right? And so imagine how many girls sent that to their boyfriends, right? So like, True. yeah, I mean, to, to take it back, I would say something that's relatable, right? Shareable. And in, in my experience, controversial, right? When you do something like you can engage from bait pretty well on social media and like, you know, I, I kind of cringe when I do it, but it just works so well. So it's like, why would I not? Yeah, that's the thing. Give us an example of like a of a controversial hook that you've used like recently. Well, so in the past couple of weeks, so I went on a golf trip with one of my buddies who's like probably one of the biggest content creators in golf in Australia. We went on this trip. And so there's this guy who he's been going viral in the last year on social media in the golf world because he does this pause in the top of his swing. He gets to the top and then just stops for starting the downswing, which is quite a unique move. And anyway, we were joking around and like I started hitting the ball phenomenally using this pause, right? So then I started making these videos of like basically going like before the pause and after the pause. And like the first video got about 1.2 million views. And then I was like, okay, let's just like repurpose this. The next one got like maybe 600K. And then I repurposed it again. Then it got 2 million, right? So it's like, yeah, anyway, that was a, like a, a thing that worked because I sort of leveraged something that was trending, like this pause thing. This guy is well-known by everyone. So all the comments are like, bro's copying ban, blah, 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 which, you know, like, I don't care. Like it's, it's all noise. Like I've never met someone who's like hating on me that's doing better than me. So it's just yeah. like, um, yeah, I just do it for a lot of fun and um, yeah, but yeah, it's pretty funny. Yeah. Cool. Um, you mentioned leverage there. How have you created or used leverage in boost media for yeah, so my company? Firstly, a lot of automation. So like I try to automate as anything, like anything and everything, if it can be automated, like there's a simple framework that like, I can't remember where I got it from, but it's like, when you have a task, it's like the first thing you ask, like, can this be automated, right? Yes, automated. No, can this be delegated, right? Who can do this, right? And then the last thing is like, if those two can't, then maybe you have to do it, right? Because I think time is like, not to be cliche, but time is very important. So like, whenever I have something to do, I'm just like, who can actually do this for me? And there's, there's times where it might not be worth spending the amount of money to get it done. It's all... I guess, circumstantial. Some people say, you know, oh, just delegate. But if you have no money and they have time, like you have to do it. So yeah, just do as much software and automation as possible, creating processes around each task that then, yeah, you could have one person running this system that without the system, it might've taken six people to to have the same amount of efficiency. Yeah. Um, with this software element, what is your biggest piece of software that you use at the moment to try and help you out to create that time sort of freedom it just depends on which part of the business like there's things for every okay. part of the business right so for one example is like for email right so cold email is like a popular way that you can sort of i guess generate clients and now with be well i'm actually using it for the influencer outreach where i could get a, a va or so not even a va i can get someone who's like got some kind of tech stack right who can go to linkedin 
and I tell him the exact profile of the people that I want to get, and he can get me a thousand emails, phone numbers, names in an hour, right? Amazing. Then, yeah. I, have a, then I have a script that is in uh, like a sequence of emails that's in this software called Reach Inbox, right? All I yeah. literally do is upload these leads into Reach Inbox, and then depending how many email accounts I have connected to there is like determines how many I can send. But long story short, I could send 2,000 emails a day without having to spend a single second doing it, right? Yeah. So like, that's just and in the, yeah. Uh, the return on that. Weekend, yeah, yeah. So what would you say the return has been on those emails that you've sent out? Let's take Be Well. So your e-commerce um, venture that yourself and your partner are going through at the moment. Take that as an example. Yeah, well, I mean, it's hard to measure the return on that because we literally started launching the outreach maybe like a week and a half ago for that. Okay. And so... But literally yesterday was the first person who we'd sent the product to that got back to us. And she, it was, it was brilliant. She literally goes, Hey Lewis, just want to let you know, I got the strips yesterday. Uh, my boyfriend and I used them last night and holy shit. Like we we're both so skeptical. And even my boyfriend goes like, fuck, I wish like, I can't remember how she said it, but it's like, I hate the fact that these things actually work, but they work so good because I think with a, a product like this, people think, Oh, it's a gimmick. It's a scam. Like, I mean, I, saw Hormozy wearing them. That's like, you know, where I first ever tried. I tried his ones that uh, he yeah. has custom made for himself when I was in Vegas at his workshop. And like, I had never, I'd seen him wear them a million times, but I'd never even thought about wearing it, right? And then I tried it and I was like, holy shit, like this is unreal. So I went to the pharmacy, CVS, Walgreens, bought every different one you could, had like hundreds of them. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I digress from that, but um, yeah, basically... In terms of the, the return on email, like in the agency, like, I mean, it would be responsible for like hundreds of thousands of revenue and it's very cheap to run, right? Like it's compared to say like Facebook ads, right? You can spend a hundred dollars a day on ads and get like, let's say you get a, a $5 cost per lead, which is really good, right? So you yeah. get 20 leads for a hundred bucks, right? On Facebook ads, right? To convert a lead, you might convert two out of every 100, right? So like- yeah. I mean, I have spreadsheets that have all the data. The customer acquisition cost is significantly lower. But that being said, I have shifted away from email purely because it kind of, to scale it, takes a lot of effort, right? Yeah. Like I spent so long to build the system. Sorry, I don't want to say so long, like, because only one email is capable of sending so much. Like, you can only send 50 emails per day per, per email account before yeah. it gets, like, burned by the, the email servers. And so... Yeah. Anyway, if I wanted to reach an extra 500 people, I would need to buy five more domains and like go through this rigorous setup process versus with ads, you have a profitable ad, you just go, cool, I'm going to increase the budget from 100 to 200, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Obviously more risk and stuff involved there, but yeah, at the same time, I think it, it, it's a great system. I think any business should really have. Yeah, for sure. Um, So trying to implement that into someone else's business, um, if you had one bit of advice for someone just starting out, what would that be? For implementing, yeah, I mean, is, we'll go like email marketing into like a brand new business. Yeah, well, I I was fortunate that when I got into business, like one of my friends was already in sales and he, he just actually said to me, he's like, bro, he goes, you have to reach out to a hundred people a day. Like, and he's, I was doing this all manually. He's like, do not ever complain to me that you're not making enough money unless you're reaching out to minimum a hundred people a day. Right. Mm. And I was like, okay, I just took that as gospel. And, you know, like in the second month of running Bruce, like I've made more money than I ever thought I could ever make in a month. Right. Purely by following that. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it's very cliche again. I hate like quoting other people thing, but it's like, you really have to just do so much, like so much volume and just focus on the one thing that's actually going to produce the result. People get so caught up in like a million different things of like, oh, I've got a, have everything perfect, gonna have perfect content, perfect this, perfect that. When in reality, you just have to talk to as many potential customers as possible. Right? Figure yeah. out what problem you solve for them, solve that problem for them, you know. Yeah. It's plain and simple. Honestly, it sounds like you've been immersed in Alex Hormozy. Cause that's all he said. Oh, yeah. I mean, like this <laughs> this uh, I don't listen to a lot of his stuff like at the moment, but this is stuff that I've said before I'd even followed him. Right. Yeah. It's just like it, it's the fundamentals of business. And it's like, yeah. you know, they say in basketball, like you know, uh, what's his name? Steph Curry's so good because he just practices the fundamentals so much. And it, it really is just the fundamental. And even to this day, I still have to be reminded. I'm like, shit, I'm not doing as well as I should be. And I'm like, wait, well, what are we actually, what are the inputs? Right? And I'm like, fuck, like, you know, to actually quote Hormozy, this is my favorite Hormozy quote. We need to be reminded more than we need to be taught, right? Like there's a million things that we already know, 
but sometimes like you just literally need to be reminded because we just forget right it's like yeah a million things and then you just have that little reminder and you're like oh yeah shit I'm yeah not doing enough. literally one thing um speaking about hormozy like going back to what you said about uh, sending out 100 emails um that you the conversation between you and your friend i think hormozy's got a bit saying the rule of 100 mm-hmm. so it's like contact 100 people send out 100 emails spend $100 on ads a day um for like 100 days or something like that and tell me that you're not tell me that the scale isn't going to move if you do that consistently every single day for 100 days like it's yeah. going to move so yeah. it's just having the com- the commitment and the consistency to then go and do it, right? Yeah, it's just sales fundamentals, right? And that's where like Homer is a sales guy, sales and marketing. That's his yeah like, forte. And I Bread think and you you know like that is the most important thing when you're starting a business. Like you have to understand how to sell. Like yeah, if yeah. you don't, then and like if you look at the majority of super successful, like, sorry, I'm not gonna say the majority, but like a couple of examples. Mark Cuban started out in sales. Uh, Sarah, uh, Sarah. What's her name? Uh, the, the lady who founded Spanx started out in some, yep. you know, door to door sales. And so it's like, you understand that you have the foundation where you can actually build something. Yeah, 100%. Um, if you had to start a business all over again from the very start, what are the three bits of advice or three things that you do first? Yeah, I would just look at firstly, like the model, right? Like the business model is really everything, right? Like, um, Warren Buffett always says it's not about how hard you roll, it's about the boat you're in, right? Yeah. And like an agency, it's a great initial vehicle, but it like to actually scale that to like a you know a substantial business, it is incredibly complex. Right. And like there's a reason why I haven't scaled it further because like one, I'm probably not skilled enough, and two, I actually like almost unconsciously don't want to because yeah. it's just it, it just gets so chaotic. And like you can obviously like uh create systems, but like simplicity is so key. Like I I've made so many mistakes in terms of like, oh, we should add this service. We should add this. We should add extra videos. And like, like now I was looking back like, Jesus Christ, why did I not just keep it simple? Um, so yeah, that would probably be the second point is like keep the business as simple as possible, right? Yeah. Like if it's an e-commerce or something, start with one product, right? Um, if it's, yeah, a service, start with just one service. Um, so I'll say the model, simplicity. And then like, I would probably say how, how big is the problem that it solves? Like, Everyone has these ideas like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But if you actually think like, does this genuinely solve a problem for people? Um, and is this something that, you know, uh, they would continue to pay for over and over? The best businesses like, uh, you know, Coca-Cola is a great example, right? Like it's uh, it's not recurring revenue, but it's reoccurring because people taste it. They get addicted to it. And then they're in every freaking store. And yeah, that's not advice to go and start a Coca-Cola. But I think, no. think through the frame of like, how can you how could you like do something that like maybe models their process in terms of like just being a product that one is really good and two, you know, um, yeah. once people have it, they just want more and more, which will yeah. naturally just like grow over time. Yeah. So what you're saying is put cocaine in everything and it'll fly, right? Probably. Yeah, that, would, <laughs> that would work. That would definitely work. I know. Um, all right. I've got one more question for you um so when because i know yourself and your partner have created be well mm-hmm. and are working on that right now um what would you say is like creating obviously an e-commerce business from the get-go how do you go about then scaling that now i know you've spoken about scaling boost um media how would you go about scaling this yeah, so I had a conversation with one of my, like, I wouldn't even call him a client. Like, he's sort of become a friend. Like, we've done a lot of work, like, uh, over the last few years. And he has, like, a very successful e-commerce business. And, like, you know, we're chatting. And he basically goes, look, this is exactly what I would do if I was you. And there was a bunch of things in here that I'd already thought of. But this was a really great revalidation. Like, one, you have to get ads profitable, right? Like, you have to, t- especially in the start, we're only about three weeks into having this business. So, like, we have some of the ads that are profitable, but some of them are losing. So, it's like, you know, you break even, but that's not scalable. Right. So it's like one, you got to just test so much creative until you find those winning combinations of like, you know, copy, headlines, creative. So that's like really one thing. But then the second thing is this kind of product, like it has viral potential. Right. So basically uh, implementing organic strategy, um, which I won't go too much into, but like 
where like if we if we hammer out this form of content for the next three months i would think it would be unreasonable for something to not go massively viral right um, yeah. because yeah like even just some of the reactions of people trying them you put it on and it's like holy shit like i can actually breathe properly right so yeah. you've got to sort of show that as well and then yeah the third thing is like once you have those in place like going to wholesale right get into like pharmacies uh, shops like because yeah they they really want to see uh like a good amount of traffic both through like paid and organic because you know they're not going to stock something that no one knows about or like you know no yeah. one's going to buy yeah, so, yeah like because my goal is yeah our goal really is to get it into wholesale as quick as possible so like the quick we can get those first two things done then you know it could really be exponential growth hopefully yeah it will be i've tested i've tried and tested it it's great i love it yeah, appreciate that. um we'll wrap up there thank you very much yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, um, if people want to catch up with what you're doing, where would they go? Well, I am incredibly inactive on social media, but uh, Lewis Schenk, uh, yeah, probably the best place on Instagram. Cool. And if you want to go test out Be Well, I'll drop a link before um, in the notes and on the Instagram, I'll tag everything. Appreciate it, bro. Thank you. All right. Thank you for your time. Appreciate you, bro. Thanks, Lewis.